Salt to the Sea begins in winter of 1945, near the end of World War II. The Russian forces are closing in on the Germans in the area that was known as East Prussia. East Prussia was a region of Prussia located along the coast of the Baltic Sea between Lithuania and Poland. Prior to World War II, Prussia's estimated population was over 40 million people. As the Russians advanced into East Prussia, the danger increased. But the Nazi regime, they forbid civilians to evacuate. Hitler felt that evacuation orders would send a signal that Germany was losing the war. But in January of 1945, the message became clear to everyone. Run for your lives. But for many, it was already too late. Millions of people tried to evacuate, but for some, the only way to escape was over water, through ships on the Baltic Sea. So the Germans staged an enormous naval evacuation called Operation Hannibal. They commandeered vessels of all kinds, even fishing boats and dinghies, to get people out of the region. One of the ships that was designated for the operation was the Wilhelm Gusloff. Originally built as a leisure cruise ship, the Gusloff had served during the war as a hospital ship and then as barracks for naval personnel. Capacity of the ship was about 1,400 people, but the Germans took all of the furniture off and they even drained the swimming pool in order to fit more people. When the ship sailed on January 30th, it was carrying over 10,000 people, including 5,000 children. The passengers on board were dreaming of warmth, of family, of freedom. But waiting below in the depths of the Baltic Sea was a Soviet submarine. Three torpedoes, 60 minutes to sink, and 9,343 people lost in the sea. Every country views history through their own cultural lens. And although the Wilhelm Gusloff was a German ship, there were also Lithuanians, Latvians, Estonians, Croatians, and others on board. So in order to represent the various narratives, I tell the story through alternating viewpoints of four characters. So we have four overlapping psyches, a Lithuanian girl, a Polish girl, an East Prussian boy, and a young German sailor. I spent three years researching Salt to the Sea. I traveled to half a dozen countries and conducted countless interviews. I spent a lot of time in Poland, the area that used to be East Prussia. I walked the path of the refugees and I visited and studied the port where the Wilhelm Gusloff boarded and departed. The ghost ship, as the Wilhelm Gusloff is often called, now lies at the bottom of the Baltic Sea, off the coast of Poland. I'm so indebted to the Polish people who welcomed me so warmly and shared their history and helped me research this book. Two Polish divers in particular were such a great help. Over 40 years ago, they were amongst the first to dive the Gusloff and they had to get Soviet approval to do it. One of the divers told me it was like swimming through a forest of black bones. Another diver told me that he saw a skeleton of a soldier still wearing boots and a military belt. Researching the testimonies of the survivors was chilling. One of the men had written, quote, when I close my eyes, I can still see the children who had been thrown overboard in their life jackets, their heads under the water, their little feet sticking in the air and I hear their mother's screams. Stories of strength through struggle resonate really strongly with me. I'm the daughter of a refugee, and after fleeing from Stalin, my father lived in refugee camps for nine years. He lost his country, he lost his home, he lost his extended family. My father's cousin also fled from Lithuania, 
but she became trapped in this area of East Prussia, and the only escape was over water. My father's cousin was granted passage on the Wilhelm Gustloff, but the day of the voyage, fate intervened, and she did not board the Gustloff. She took another ship, and therefore she survived, and she and her husband are the ones who encouraged me to write this book. Writing Salt to the Sea allowed me to explore history through the eyes of young people who are forced to leave everything they've ever loved behind. And so writing the novel not only brought a deeper understanding of my personal family experience, it confirmed to me that humanity can prevail even in the darkest of hours. Some people ask me, well, why write these obscure stories? Is hidden history even important? Yes, I maintain it is important because during my research in museums, I found bottles that contained messages that were thrown overboard from some of these refugee ships. And that told me that these souls were desperate for someone, anyone, to know their story. You are that someone. We know the villains' names. We teach the villains' names. But we don't know the victims' names. 9,343 people perished on the Wilhelm Gustloff. Each one had a story. Lift their bottles from the water. Please, give them a voice.